Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, BMT Basic Matrices Test. My name is David Brieber and I have the pleasure to guide you through this webinar today. If you have any questions in between, please feel free to post them uh, uh, with the GoToWebinar tool. Uh, I will uh, try to answer them at the end of this webinar. So let's start. Matrices have been used for uh, quite some time as a testing paradigm. Charles Spearman, uh, who studied under William Wundt in Germany and who was one of the pioneers in intelligence research, noticed already in, in the 1920s that many different tests correlate more or less with each other. Uh, this led him to assume that there is a single common latent ability dimension, which explains this correlation, uh, the so-called G-factor, a factor for general cognitive ability. Uh, a student of Spearman, John Raven, had some troublesome experiences with the test batteries measuring intelligence that were used in these days. And based on Spearman's theory, he therefore wanted to develop a test that was shorter than the tests that were used at, at these times and which was also applicable to many different groups of people. So therefore he developed a test that used so-called progressive matrices as nonverbal visual stimuli. Matrices tests have since been widely used in research and practice um, therefore we know very well uh, which cognitive processes are required to do uh, such tasks. Currently, uh, in, in, in current uh, uh, intelligent models, such as the CHC model, um, these models assign matrices tasks to inductive logic reasoning of fluid intelligence. This means that it's about abstract logical reasoning, which is relatively independent of education and learning. Um, the deduction that this is also a good indicator for general cognitive ability uh, is based on the empirically often replicated finding that uh, the secondary factor of fluid intelligence is most strongly correlated uh, with the G factor. Um, in course of a time, a large number of matrices tests have been developed. Uh, on the one hand, as individual tests, um, such as the Raven test, which uh, are uh, um, used in for different difficulty ranges, or in VTS, we have the adaptive matrices test, as the name already suggests, uh, which allows you to have adaptive test administration um, and on the other hand, matrices tasks are also a fixed part of most intelligence test batteries. In VTS, for example, INT or INSPOT, as you can see in INT, uh, there are also certain variations on the classical matrices test paradigms to make them also uh, usable on a smartphone, for example. Um, the Ravens tests um, are, are now somewhat, I would say, yeah, maybe a little bit outdated when it comes to design and norms, while other uh, VTS tests um, and, and subtests of intelligence test batteries were primarily designed for uh, measuring uh, in a range of medium to high performance range. So from our point of view, what was missing was a modern matrices test, which uh, was especially developed for uh, the lower performance range. And this is exactly what we have done with BMT. It is a test that is particularly suitable for this lower performance range because it contains many simple test items. The test material is generally simpler and more clearly perceptible and the test material and the instructions are generally less complex. So um, BMT is 
uh, not only uh, not only has an appealing and modern test design, but it's also developed based on state-of-the-art psychometric methods, which allow us um, to provide you with maximum fle flexibility when it comes to test administration. As a matrices test, you can, of course, uh, use BMT for a wide range of applications, can be used in clinical psychology, clinical neuropsychology, but also for other areas such as traffic psychology or uh, vocational or educational counseling. Um, how was BMT developed? Our test developed uh, developers have, of course, studied the large number of literature that is available for uh, such kind of tasks, and they developed um, their own test item uh, based on current cognitive theories and also on empirical findings on uh, working on uh, matrices tasks. In contrast to the common three by three format, uh, we choose uh, a two by three format. On the one hand, to reduce the complex, uh, complexity, and on the other hand, to be able to present the task in the generally uh, larger size. In total, um, the, the final uh, test item pool contains uh, 98 test items all of which have been shown to measure reasoning ability one-dimensionally. Uh, the whole uh, BMT test was created in an appealing and colorful design with colors that on the one hand provide good contrast and on the other hand which can still be differentiated in case of any color vision deficiencies or color blindness. Um, as far as test administration is concerned, you have full flexibility with BMT. First of all, you can choose between three different types of test administrations. A linear, a randomized, and an adaptive test administration. Let me briefly explain this in more detail. Um, with linear tests, you usually have a small pool of test items. And here, uh, each individual item is presented in ascending order and ascending difficulty. Um, and if you would repeat the test with the same or another person, you would get exactly the same test items, again, in the same order, independent of the response behavior of the person and also always with the fixed number of items. In the randomized test administration, um, you need a larger test item pool. Here, the items are also presented in ascending difficulty, um, but it's um, the selection of each item um, is drawn from the item pool randomly based on a specific difficulty range. So if you would repeat the test again for another person, you would get quite slightly different items which have the same psychometric uh, qualities, um, but are just have different test and item material. So um, with this kind of administration type, you have basically an almost infinite number of parallel test forms. And last but not least, in the adaptive test and administration mode, you again have a large item pool, but here the items are not presented in a linear fashion, but they adapt to the response behavior of the person and uh, uh, the, generally the, the ability level of the person. So this gives the opportunity to measure exactly at the person's performance level. Um, depending on the response behavior, there are always different tasks and also different number uh, of tasks. So here you can see um, a few ideas about when, which type of test administration 
might be particularly suitable for you. The linear test administration is mainly for when you're doing the first, the initial testing, where it is also important, and when it's also important for you when the test duration is always similar. The randomized test administration can also be used for initial testing, but is especially useful for follow-up testing uh, because you have these multiple uh, parallel forms available. And in addition, this form is also more suitable for group testing since cheating is not really possible due to the different item material. And here you also have a, a similar test duration for, for each person. And the adaptive test administration mode uh, has also uh, these advantages, but you can um, even more accurately measure uh, at the appropriate uh, performance level of the person. However, due to the variable number of items, also the test duration may vary. Um, uh, in addition to um, the type of a test administration, PMD also allows you to choose uh, between two different types of instructions, the standard and the test supervisor supported instruction. In the standard instruction, as usual with digital tests, the instruction is presented in writing on the screen and the test person is supposed to read the instructions independently. Um, in the so-called test supervisor supported instructions, on the other hand, they are um, the test person is instructed or you as a test supervisor instruct the task of the test verbally and so there is no not really written instructions on the screen itself. Uh, however, you as a test supervisor always have the opportunity to fade in the instructions for you if you're unsure at a certain point. Um, besides these two different instructions and, uh, and uh, also the type of administration, there are also additional um, settings. And um, for example, uh, if you are in the adaptive mode, you can specify the general test duration, um, but you have to keep in mind that this also linked to the reliability of the test. So, the shorter, the, the lower the reliability, the longer, the higher the reliability. Um, and you will also have the possibility, especially for the randomized and the linear <clears throat> test administration, that you can also specify the medium difficulty level uh, of the item. So you see you can adapt um, the test administration really to your to your needs. And another point that comes into play and which is especially uh, important nowadays um, in, in, in times of lockdowns and, and uh, doing uh, testing without any contact to the person, of course, online administration is an important point. So BMT can be administered offline and online in a so-called proctored mode. Proctored mode refers to a location independent but still supervised testing in the internet browser which is generally as affordable as on-site testing. You can still do this behavioral observations and you can use this, uh, this type of attested administrations easily with our VTS online uh, platform and your account. So uh, you can use this option there. Um, after you've performed the test with a test person, the results are automatically evaluated and uh, are there immediately. Uh, the test results for PMT are pretty straightforward to interpret. There is only one main test rule um, where you can also uh, get the norm values for. In the test protocol, you can always see uh, how the test person uh, worked 
uh, on each items and on which items and in what time. Um, and for the adaptive test administration, you also have this uh, adaptive progress chart where you see how the, the test uh, presentation algorithm um, was actually executed. Um, DMT fulfills all requirements regarding quality criteria. Uh, apart from the adaptive test administration where you can define your target reliability, the linear and the randomized uh, versions also show uh, a good um, uh, reliability measures above 0.7. As mentioned earlier, um, we were able to demonstrate that each task, each item in BMT measures reasonability uh, unidimensionally. Uh, with regards to convergent and discriminant validity, BMT is highly correlated with SPM, the, sta the Ravens Standard Progressive Matrices Test, um, and is less uh, correlated with measures uh, whom, uh, which measure other uh, uh, constructs. So this also speaks for this convergent and discriminant validity. And of course, um, BMT has also up-to-date norms, which were collected in 2020. Uh, 357 people between the age of 15 and 19 were included in this norm. And in addition to the overall norm, there are also age, education, gender-specific norms available. Um, just want to mention this here, that we are also interested in adding more international and clinical norms, as well as child and as adolescent norms. So if you would like to contribute to this norming process, please feel free to contact us. So um, to summarize, the BMT is a, a matrices test for measuring reasoning and general intelligence. I hope I was able to show you that BMT was developed specifically for the lower performance range and therefore uh, can very well differentiate in, in this range. As a matrices test, it, is, uh, um, it can be used in a wide range of fields of applications. Uh, it can currently be used from the age of 15 years and older. And um, as you have seen with the BMT, you have really a very flexible tool at hand, uh, be it uh, linear or randomized, adaptive test presentation, offline or online, standard instructions, test supervisor supported instructions, so everything uh, is possible with PMT.